Now then, how are you doing? I'm Steve and welcome to my workshop. So, before you hear me introduce the video, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who's watched my two videos so far. I am really grateful and very humbled that you've taken the time to watch my videos. And thank you for all the likes and the comments. It's been really great, honestly. And also a big thank you to everyone who subscribed. It means a lot. And again, I'm totally overwhelmed at the fact that people want to subscribe to this channel. So, I'll now hand you over to me so we can get the video started. But uh, Steve, Steve, you forgot this. Ah, oh, thanks Steve. I don't know what to do without you. What a good lad. What Steve's just given me, or I've just given me, is a book by Norm Abram from the New Yankee Workshop, which is all about shaker furniture. And I loved the shaker style of furniture, its simplicity and its beauty. One thing that's not in the book is shaker oval boxes. And that's something that I've wanted to build for over 30 years, but I've never got round to it. But today, we're getting round to it. For those of you that don't know what a shaker box is, the shakers made these beautiful oval boxes uh, and they used uh, cherry or pine wood. These really were the Tupperware of the day and they made thousands if not tens of thousands. They made them in different sizes to which they gave numbers. So you had number two, four, six, eight, ten, up to whatever size. And they used them to store foodstuffs in to keep insects away in the kitchen. They used them uh, to store their seeds in for when they were growing stuff in their garden. And they also used them in the workshop to store nails and fixings and other stuff. They're very simple construction with bent wood. There's no glue involved in the construction of these boxes and they're held together with these copper tacks. The lid and the base are held on with some wooden pegs. And for me, they are a thing of beauty. A nice tight fitting lid, they look really good. But in order to make the box, we have to go back a few steps because we first need to make a former so that we can bend the wood around to make the box. We also need to make two plugs. We put in the end of the box once we've bent it so that it can dry on the plugs. We also need to cut the thin strips with the swallow tails on. And once we've cut the strips, we then the shakers used to stick them into a bath of hot water for about 20 minutes take them out and then bend them around the former. I don't have a hot bath full of water, but what I do have is a wallpaper stripper and a plastic bag, and we'll use that. So join me as we try and make my first ever shaker boxes. Let's go. I had some strips of uh, moisture resistant MDF in the workshop, which is why it's green. And I thought the easiest and safest way to break these down was to use the track saw. You could use a track saw if you've got one, or a table saw, a chop saw, or a hand saw, or a circular saw. Any sort of saw. So this is me marking out the ovals on the blanks for the different size boxes. I made a template out of a piece of plywood, but you could print one out from your printer and stick it to the top of the MDF and cut round there.
Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed a 5 litre box of Merlot in the background, brought to me by my mother-in-law from France. But of course, no drinking whilst in the workshop using power tools. Never ever. It's nice wine now. Alright, we're back. So, you've seen me so far cut out all the pieces of MDF to make the core and we used the bandsaw for that. And then you saw me take a piece over to the sander, the belt sander, and we sanded it to the line. So we've got our shape, which is going to be what we use for our core. And we've got this one for the number two box, this one for the number three box, and the biggest one of all for the number four box. Okay, so what we need to do now is to take the piece that we've sanded, which is going to be the shape of our core, fix it to another piece with some glue and screws, and then flush trim it on the router. So that's the next step. All right. Okay, so we've now made our cores. They look very good. That's a number two core. Obviously a number three is a bit wider and thicker. And then we've got the number four, the daddy of the cores. Number four, and I've marked top on them. So that's looking really good. <clears throat> so what we've got to do now is when we, well, after we've bent the wood around the form and we put the nails in to secure it, we need to put a piece in the top and a piece of in the bottom so that it makes the wood hold its shape because once we bent the wood we take the form out and we put a couple of little stoppers in the top and the bottom so i need to make those now so i've drawn around the actual forms so we've got the right shape so again i'll cut them out on the bandsaw and i'll sand them on the sander so once I've cut these out of the bandsaw and I take them to the sander to sand them to the right size, I want to put a little, a slight bevel on the edge so that they will fit in the top of the box and the bottom of the box just that much more snugly. All right? At last, a shot of me using the pillar drill that is in focus. Thanks, Tim from Turgworks, for the advice. Okay, so we've done, can I say the boring bit? Well, no, not the boring bit, but we've done the not so glamorous bit. I think that's the thing to say, isn't it? We've made our formers, our plugs, our uh, templates. We've done all that. Now we can get on to the actual uh, juicy bit of making the boxes. So I've got some ash. The shakers would have used uh, cherry, I think, but I don't have any cherry, but I have got some ash and it's got some nice straight grain without any knots. So that should bend okay. I've bent it before, now went all right. Let's hope it goes okay this time. So what we need to do now is to mill these up, get some nice straight edges on them, and then we need to make them the right thickness to bend for the boxes. Okay, so you'll see me doing some thicknessing, some planing, some sawing, and I'll talk you through it, along with some more lovely music. All right, see you in a bit. So here I'm cutting down the ash until it's the correct height for each box and the height for each band that forms the lid of the box. Mm -hmm. 
This is me using my thin strip rip jig. I've set it so it'll cut 3mm strips. Once you've cut a strip off this piece of wood, you push the piece of wood against the fence, move the fence so the wood touches the jig and you can cut another 3mm strip or any width that you want. Okay, so you saw me cut the uh, wood into thin strips on the table saw. I deliberately cut them just a little bit thicker than what I need because I want to get a nice finish on them, which I don't necessarily get with the table saw. So what I'm going to do now is put them through the planer. But obviously, they're too thin to go through the planer. It'll eat them up like a packet of biscuits if I stick these through there. So what we need to do is to stick these to these pieces of melamine and then I can put them both through together and that way we should be all right. Well, hopefully we'll be all right. We'll find out, won't we? All right, so that's the next step. Let's crack on. This is me using a template to uh, mark out the uh, swallow tails and the holes. This is piece of wood is for the band for the lid. Uh, I made mine out of some acrylic, but again you could print it out on a computer, stick it to the piece of wood or cut it on a piece of cardboard and use that. This is me using the sander to put a bevel on the end of every strip so when the wood bends round itself it's much more flush. Okay, so now for the exciting bit. This is me just putting some plywood in the bottom of the bag so I can rest the box strips on top so that the steam can circulate. This is just an ordinary plastic bag that I got from a local farm supply shop. Cost me 70 pence, can you believe that? 70 pence. In a minute you'll see me attach the, uh, the hose from the wallpaper stripper, which creates steam. Uh, 
I made sure that uh, I used the electrician's tape tightly round the end to seal the end of the bag. Okay, so the steam is on now and I steamed it for 30 minutes. Don't ask me why I chose 30 minutes. It just seemed like a good idea. That's me cutting a hole in the end of the bag to let the steam out. Otherwise, the bag would explode and we certainly don't want that. Not at 70 pence each. After the 30 minutes, I just cut the bag open with a pair of scissors. But please, be very careful. As you can see, that steam is very, very hot. It was amazing how quick the wood cooled down and you can see me now starting to bend the wood around the former. You'll see a line on the former and that's the start line so that your swallow tails finish in the place that you want them to. Hang on, when this bloke moves his hand, there you go, there's the line. So you start there and bend the wood round so your swallow tails finish in a nice position. Once you've bent the wood round the former, you hold it in place, do a little dance for a few minutes, two minutes, three minutes, a little bit more dancing, and then you mark on the top of the wood where each piece meets, because you're going to take it off the former in a minute and put the tacks in. Now you bend the wood back round to where those two marks meet each other. Uh, the piece of pipe is a homemade anvil, which lots of people use. So that when you put the copper tacks in, it cinches the end as they come through on the other side. No glue, just copper tacks. We can fit the plugs to the top and bottom of the box. Nice and tight, nice snug fit. And then we can get the band and bend the band round the box with the plug in. So this forms the lid or part of the lid of the box. So the same as before, hold it in place for a little while, mark the top with a pencil and then put some more tacks in. Then you put the band back on the box and leave the both dry overnight. Now I'm marking round the inside of the bottom of the box and the inside of the lid. So uh, this is some ash I prepared earlier which I cut out on the bandsaw. Fit in the lid there so it's a nice tight snug fit. And in a minute you'll see me uh, drill some holes. I made a little jig out of a couple of pieces of plywood so I rest the drill on so that it drills in the middle of the wood for the base and the top. Now then, I'm sorry Shaker Brothers, I know there's no glue, but these uh, bamboo skewers that I bought, they were just slightly less than 3mm and I had a 3mm drill bit. So I thought, best be safe than sorry, so just a little dab of glue on the end and then cut them off with the uh, cutters. Sanded them back later on and there we go. Okay well the boxes are almost done now and they haven't turned out too bad. Uh, there's a few things I'm not happy about but we'll get to that at the end. Um, so now we come to finishing the boxes. Now the shakers would often finish the boxes in very bright colourful paints. But sadly, I haven't got any bright colourful paint. But I'm going to do something the Shakers would never have dreamed of doing. And that's finish the boxes with some Rubio Monocoat. So, let's find some Rubio Monocoat and finish these boxes off. Okay, see you in a bit.
So, we've made it to the end. I've made my very first ever shaker boxes after waiting 30 years or over 30 years to make them. And am I happy with them? Well, they're all right. I think that's what I would say, they're all right. There's a lot of things that I could have done better and I will do better the next time I make them. One of the big problems is the copper tax. You can actually buy the copper tax from America that are made on the same machinery that the shakers use to make their copper tax. Sadly, I can't get any in this country at this time. So I just used copper tacks that I could find, which were too long. And what you didn't see in the video was the fact that I spent about an hour and a half cutting all the tacks down to a different length and resharpening the ends and making them a little bit thinner so they would work with the boxes. So a big takeaway is if you're going to make these, you need the proper tacks. The bending the wood went fantastic. I'm over the moon with how the wood bent. And overall, they feel really good. Uh, the lids fit nice. I finished them with Rubio Monocoat, uh, cotton white, and I think that looks really good. That's a number four box. The number three I did in Rubio uh, Pure. And again, that one came out really good. So I'm really pleased with that. The number two, the little box, which I finished in cotton white. <laughs> I made a bit of a mistake on this one. If you can see, or keen-eyed people can see, the swallowtails don't match up with the lid and the base. And I think that's because when I was putting together the lid with this one, I picked up the wrong band, because I did make two of these. And I think I picked up the band from the second box, but I'd nailed it on and fixed it before I realised. And I didn't have enough wood to make another lid for the other top to make the box look good. So, there's a lesson to learn. Don't try and do too much at once. Overall, they're okay, but I don't think I'll be getting a job with the shakers making boxes. Not just yet, anyway. But, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.